shit the bed, the sprinklers have gone off. Apologies for that, ladies and gentlemen. Par three, over water, um, and I'm down in this little valley here, which is a safe place to miss. Back again, it's been a while. Um, so thanks for all those nice messages from people who are asking me how I am and if I'm okay, because I suddenly just dropped off the cliff. Um, but basically, life just got in the way of golf. And then obviously that gets really in the way of making YouTube videos about golf. Uh, not played that much uh, so far this year and then obviously with all the pandemic and all the other stuff that's gone on um, yeah it's a bit rusty but anyway um, so because of that I'm going to be sort of like utilizing a slightly different mindset um, this is something something that I think that we could all start to implement and apparently it's something Tiger Woods used to do and you know what he's pretty good he's done all right Right, so I missed the green in the right spot. Um, hit the green with my next chip, just left it short with my putt, putted in for a four, right? But this is what I'm trying to do right now. I'm changing my mindset, utilizing the things that Tiger did when he learned to play the game. Because you may or may be aware of this, but I'll go through it anyway for those who aren't. And when Tiger learned to play the game, he was only four years of age. And because of that, he couldn't reach any of the greens in regulation. So his coach, or the guy giving him his first lesson, Rudy Durant, made up Tiger Par. So we just added on more shots or more strokes to each hole so Tiger could actually realistically get to the holes so he could start to make par, but it was relevant to his own ability level. This, and the real critical bit with about this is, is that when Tiger started doing this, by the age of, I think it's five, Tiger had already registered an eight under Tiger par score. And I think this is basically what Tiger learned to do more than what we learned to do, is he learned to score. He learned to go low. He got used to going low right from an early age. I think this is why we have scoring barriers. I've already my, my, made my mind up that before I got to this golf course today, I decided I was gonna add on two extra strokes to every hole and change the par to that. So Barney par for me is two over the standard scratch par. So I am one under Barney par, okay? Already, I've made my first birdie. Because I played those shots completely differently knowing that. And the same way I'm gonna play this hole completely differently knowing that. Right, so I know it's only 130 yards to clear the water. So I don't even need to hit a big club for that. I don't even need to make a full swing for that. But that is my sole responsibility or, or sole objective right now, to get the ball in play. So I've just flushed that and the sprinklers have gone on behind me, so I'm going to run. God, this is what happens when you play Twilight Golf. You have to deal with this. So I was right next to that sprinkler. The other one's still going off down the fairway. If that one would have gone off, I think me and the camera would have got absolutely totaled. So, trying to play a bit of the conditions then. I was trying to play it a little bit short and let it bump on because the green, uh, the pin's right at the front. But this is a, such a stupid, classic, amateur, average golfer mistake. I had so much green to work with behind it and I've left it short. All I want it to do with that butt shot is get it on the green. <laughs> so are you aware that the driver didn't always used to be called the driver? It used to be called the play club because it was the club most often used to put the ball in play. And just imagine if that was how drivers were referred to. But even doesn't even have to be driver, just the first club you hit off the tee. Just ask yourself, what is the play club here? What ball, what club can I hit that's gonna get the ball in play? Because it's not necessarily thinking about how far you wanna hit it in distance. You want to think about it more in the width of where you're hitting that club into. 
because the longer the club you hit, your dispersion pattern is going to get wider and wider. And that is standard throughout golf, no matter what skill or ability level you are. So does the club you're going to hit, does it actually fit into the width of where you're trying to hit it to? Because if it doesn't, you're then going to need to come down the clubs until something that does. It's a different concept to think about, isn't it? That's what we're going to do right now. So I'm asking, I've got 275 to the flag, and I'm asking myself the same question. Can I get the ball to within 30 yards away from the green? Well, no, not comfortably. Can I get the ball to 100 yards away? That would mean I'd have to hit a 275 yard shot. Potentially, yes. Or could I get the ball, as long as I can get the ball inside 150, I feel very confident going for the green. So now that is an easier thing to do. That's the easiest option I can do right now. I'm not even entertaining where that flag is because there's water down the right hand side here. There's so much green to the left. I'm not even seeing where that flag is. I'm aiming flat bang for the middle of the green. If I push it onto the flag, it's going to be more luck than it is skill. Right, so we have it. We're on the green. I do this more often things like that those putts I'm gonna get more and more used to doing it and therefore gonna be more confident about it and I'm gonna get better without working on my stroke without doing anything else other than just continually doing it but in the context of the situation okay in an attempt to try and make the point What's the play club? So all I'll try to do and demonstrate with that shot then is, it's a bit like with your wedges. Most people usually have a favorite wedge that they like to chip around the green with. And they'll open that club up and then generate a little bit more loft or they'll de-loft it, or they'll hit it fairly normally, and they can um, um, manipulate the trajectory of that shot by using that one club. You can use that same exact tactic with every club in your bag. Right, so to continue on with the demonstration, this is my fairway wood shot. I've got water in front of, uh, between me and the green. The question I need to ask myself is can I comfortably clear it? There's also water down the uh, right-hand side. So there's nothing nothing wrong with doing this there's nothing wrong with just hitting a little chip forward and then hit a chip over onto the green it's all about advancing the ball forwards getting you put yourself in great positions to hit good shots green is, the uh, the flag is at the front so you could once again think to yourself you could play it short let it check up and run in there or you could play for a bit longer. So I'm gonna take more club than is necessary. I'm gonna grip down a little bit down the shaft and I'm basically gonna hit a little bit, take a little bit of, uh, bit of club head speed off of this. Should bring the speed down, um, but due to these awesome Walker clubs, you get loads of spin out of it, I should still get the stop. So once again, see that shot. Oh god, that's all over it. So this is where my little pitch shot landed. I'm 100 yards out. Now I can just go ahead and hit a more confident shot. That was my shot from 100 yards. Wouldn't say that, like I said, it wasn't my best. The one that's a bit closer, yeah, that was the one from 150 odd. 